Hello and welcome into the AZ Kicks It Show. I am Garrett Cleverly, and as you can see in the description, we have an awesome first ever episode for you. We're going to be joined by Real Salt Lake center back Justin Glad. He's from Tucson. We have two empty seats here, which means in-studio guests. We're going to be joined by Maggie Cagle and Kate Fossey. They both play for SE Dull Souls Development Academy, and they were just with the U14 Girls National Team Camp in California. So we're going to bring them in and talk about what that experience was like training with the National Team Camp. So here on the AC Kicks It Show, we're always going to be talking Arizona soccer. And trust me, there is plenty to talk about in Arizona soccer. We'll mix it up a little bit when we get closer to the World Cup. We'll talk World Cup. We'll talk about U.S. and U.S. Women's National Teams. We'll probably talk some Premier League. But... The point is, we're always going to be talking Arizona soccer and the people that make Arizona soccer news. And perhaps one of the biggest things over the last couple weeks has definitely been Phoenix Rising. They're gearing up for yet another season, great season last year, making the playoffs. And if you missed it in the offseason, they announced a new owner coming in, a billionaire owner bringing in some money to hopefully, fingers crossed, get Phoenix Rising to that next level of potential MLS franchise. Think about that. MLS regular season games here. Yes, we have preseason, which is fantastic. But come on, MLS regular season matches. People, keep your fingers crossed. That can actually happen. Speaking of Phoenix Rising, their season opener is going to be on March 17th. That's on the road. But don't worry. The home opener will be on March 24th against Oklahoma City Energy FC. That's at that stadium on the 101 and the 202. And if you cannot wait till March 24th to get your Phoenix Rising fix on March 9th, Friday, depending on when you're watching the show. Don't forget, that's March 9th on Friday. I don't want you watching the show on Monday and saying, what the heck's going on? Friday, March 9th, I'll say it again. They're having a jersey reveal party at the Marquee Theater in Tempe. Think about it, the Marquee. I mean, I've seen Jimmy World there, Floggy Molly, Passion Pit. I mean, that, that's a legit venue. So check out their website. Check out their social media for details on that jersey reveal party. Once again, March 9th at the Marquee Theater. Bringing it down a level to the youth game. Desert Premier League was this wet past weekend. That's the regional league where Arizona, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico compete in with a chance to go to regionals. Two Arizona teams booked their tickets already to regionals, which is going to be, you know, it's horrible, horrible place to host it in Hawaii. Got to go to Hawaii for a week in June to compete in regionals. But two Arizona teams booked their tickets. Valparaiso 01 boys who, who had, had a thrilling match. They were down 2-1 to one in the 85th minute. They scored two goals in the final five minutes to book their ticket. And then CCB Stars, 99 boys. That's in the U19 division. They also booked their tickets. So congratulations to those two teams. We're going to have more teams coming up here booking their tickets. And DPL, also State League, coming up um, in May. I'm sorry, April and May, uh, booking their tickets. But these are the first two teams from Arizona to book their tickets. And speaking of CCV stars, it's a perfect segue into our next segment right here. We call it our play of the week. So if you think that you're a baller out there, you got moves, you scored a legit goal, you had a nice little 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 fake on the field, your goalkeeper made a great save, we want you to send in that video so we can feature it on this show. Every week, we'll feature one play. And this is my email right here. This is my email. Send it to me and we will feature it on this show. So check out this week's goal of the week, as we'll call it, from Richie Chacon, CCV Stars, 99 Boys, scored in the Desert Premier League. Check it out. And that goal had just so much class. I mean, it was just dirty. That goal was just dirty. So if you think that you have a better goal, a better save, whatever, we'll feature one per week, Send it right here. This is my email address. Send it to me. I don't care if you're rec, competitive, DA. I mean, I don't care what it is. Adult League, send it in. If it's legit, we'll feature it on this show. Before we welcome in Justin Glad, I wanted to talk about the Arizona players playing professionally. There's 22 of them, plus one if you count Greg Vanny, coach of Toronto FC, um, playing, playing in the U.S., playing in Mexico, and also playing in Europe. 22 players, which is awesome. We have some players at, at the tail ends of their career. We have some We have some really new, young, and a couple of upcoming players, excuse me, that are really going to kind of set the tone for the next generation of players from Arizona. Um, we're always going to be featuring them every single week uh, on, a, on, a web, on our website, which we call ASA Exports. It's where we just track them every week, right? We let you know if they started. We let you know how they did. You can always check it out on the Arizona Soccer Association website, or you can go to the Facebook page. We'll post it there every single Tuesday. But check out this list right here. So I, I divided it up into two lists, right? You kind of have your, your older veteran type players that have been around the block, that are a couple seasons in, and that's this first list you're looking at. I mean, you can see you have guys like Brad Evans, 
Luis Robles, Jessica McDonald, Donnie Toya, George Malky, lots of players on those lists who have great experience. I'm sorry, Julie Ertz, can't forget her as well too. Um, just so a lot of Arizona players who are really continuing to still make make a name for themselves, make noise, and, and just kind of really make this state look great because we do produce great players in this state. Now, if you transition over to kind of what I call the next generation list, we have a we have a really really good group, a core group of younger Arizona players who are really going to be the future of, of what represents this state. Players like Justin Glad and Brooks Land and, and NWSL Rookie of the Year Ashley Hatch. You also have. Um, Grant Lillard, who was just signed to a homegrown contract by the Chicago by the Chicago Fire. Nikki Jackson was just drafted by the Colorado Rapids. Even Evan Raldrip with Phoenix Rising. Um, just just lots of good things coming out from Arizona. So, you know, people always, I, I feel like there's always kind of this stigma that Arizona doesn't produce players. But, man, you look at this list right here. If you had to put together like a starting 11 out of both of these teams, I mean, it looked pretty nasty. I mean, I think it would look something similar similar to this right here. With Justin Glad starting at center back. And speaking of Justin Glad, we have him on the phone right now. Justin, how's it going, man? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing good. Congratulations are in order, by the way. 21 years old. You're finally a member of of society. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Feels good to have joined everyone else. Yeah, you know, even though you're you know four years into your professional career, I mean, it's it's crazy to think that you're just you're just turning 21 now. Yeah, it's. It, I don't know. I feel I feel like I'm older than I am because I've been around the team for a while and and all that good stuff. Well, now, you, it's, it's the final it's the final step, I guess, being able to legally drink. Yeah, it is. I mean, nothing else happens after 21. 21 is like the final cutoff to becoming a member of society. But but you mentioned being around the team and and being a professional for so many years, you know, when you just look at kind of your your last 12 months, right, the last year, you know, a year ago you're competing in the CONCACAF U20 championships, you get hurt, but then you're able to go to the um, U20 World Cup, then you have an MLS season, then you get called up to the U.S. national team. I mean, have you had a chance to kind of reflect over just kind of how your career has developed over the last 12 months? Yeah, it's it's for sure been, it's been a crazy ride, you know. Um and I'm just kind of going going day by day, but it's for sure crazy looking back and just seeing how one thing led to another and, and the situations that I've been in that have uh, been provided me, whether it's been the academy or, or the coaching staff that I've been with or anyone really who's, who's helped me get where I am today. Um, it's, it's been a crazy, a crazy ride. Getting called up to the, to the full senior squad, and you, you know, you've been a part of the U17s, U18s, U20s. I mean, what was that experience like now being a part of the senior squad in January for the camp? I think it was, I mean, it's been awesome. Uh, the, the U20 World Cup was an experience I'll never forget. It was, it's something that will hold with me forever. Um, and then just having those, it's been nice having those stepping stones to, to kind of build off of when it was U17, then U18, then U20, then to the full team. It's been nice to kind of develop with, with, uh, the, the best players my age and form those late, those relationships and then be able to, to keep my game, keep elevating my game to the point where I can get called into the full team uh, has been has been surreal. Did anything stand out to you that was different being with the full team versus being with the U20s? Uh, just the atmosphere around it, you know. It's, it's the full team, so there's, you know, there's grown men there and, and they kind of treat you more – they treat you more adult-like, which I mean, everyone is an adult there. Um, and me finally being in that final, finally hit the 21 club. Uh, <laughs> it, it's just, it's just more grown up, you know. It's just you, you have more free time, more alone time to kind of do whatever your body needs to get done, take care, be a professional. Um, whereas with the U20s, it was more kind of monitored and, and, and sheltered. For you. You had a great year last year. It's easy to summarize it and, and say that everything worked out well for you, but there was a little bit of a hiccup when you, in the CONCACAF, um, in the U20 championship when you did get injured. You know, have, have you had a chance to kind of look back on that, and, and how have you kind of grown as a player since that injury that did put you up for a few months and you did miss the beginning part of the uh, MLS season? Yeah. Um, for me, it just, it just fortified how, how much I love playing soccer, how much I love being able to play soccer for a living. Um, and, and being out those couple months at the beginning of the season was for sure tough to, it, it just sucked. And it made, it made me want to come back and do everything that I could in that situation to, to get back on the field as soon as I could. Um, 
and, and it made me really appreciate the the time I do have on the field. Well, when you did come back down the stretch, RSL went nine five and five. Um, I mean, you easily could tell the difference of having a player like you um, in the starting eleven, helping out the team, making that playoff run. You guys missed it out by a point, but but I wanted to ask you, you know. You know, we were talking a little earlier. You're four years in. You're just 21 years old. So you've had a few years under your belt, but still, nonetheless, you play in front of Nick Romando. You play behind Kyle Beckerman. You know, how has that helped you grow as a player, being able to play alongside these two guys that have storied uh, professional careers? Um, it's it's honestly it's there's no words that can that I can say that can tell you how much that has helped my career and my professional development having to experience guys like Nick and Kyle behind me and in front of me, giving me the, the tricks of the trade every day, observing them from the side, just seeing how they carry themselves on and off the field, um, even even in terms of just how, how they carry themselves as people. Um, it, it, it's awesome to have that, that type of influence and, and those type of role models to kind of shape my game after, shape my work rate and, and my work ethic after, and, and just the, the small things that you get every day in training, the, the tips and the – you know, maybe you should be here instead of here on this type of play. Um, it's all invaluable, and, and I'm, I'm grateful for it. Well, is it crazy, you know, as, as you're asking these guys for advice, RSL now, it, it seems like half of the roster is, is under the age of 21. A lot of academy players on the squad, you know, guys like Aaron Herrera who signed this year, Corey Baird. You know, how is that also helping you out, having guys that you're familiar with, that you played at the academy with, and even on the national teams, having them as part of the squad? Just what's that experience been like? It's it's awesome. It's a good time. It's really fun. Um, I mean, being able to have Aaron and Danny and Bullfo and Brooks and and all and Jose and and all those guys, Jordan on the team, um, it just creates it creates an environment that it, it's special. You know, you have you have a lot of guys who have that camaraderie and have that chemistry from from the academy from I don't know sixteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen years old. And you bring that into into the pros, and it for sure it helps. It's fun, it, and you know when you're enjoying playing soccer, you're gonna play better. So it, it's it's really an awesome environment, and and I'm happy to have all those guys back around. Is is it crazy when you kind of look around, you know, to your left to right shoulder, and you see these guys that, I mean, Justin, you, you guys won a, a a DA championship in 2013 when you guys beat Solar Chelsea. I mean, is it just surreal to see Brooks and Jose out there on the same field as you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, and it just – it makes it that much more special. You know, I knew we had a special team at the academy that, that year. Obviously, I think everyone kind of knew that we had a, a very talented team. And it's – but it's, you know, it's still – sometimes it's tough to translate. Not not maybe not everyone will make it, but we had a lot of a lot of that team really go out and, and pursue their dreams and, and accomplish what they, they set out to accomplish. Why is that? You know, when you look at the picture of, of the team that won that championship, the 20 players on there, about, I would say more than half now have signed professional contracts. Almost everyone played college at one time. You know, for the younger players out there who may be watching this, you know, what was it about that team that had that mentality where everyone was, was the expectation was you are going to get to the next level? It wasn't you were hoping, it was, yes, we are going to get to that next level. What was so special about that? I think there were there were a lot of factors. I think we had, we had, the one of the best if not the best coaching staff at the time we had the best if not or the best if not the best facilities at the time we had a group of talented players who we all knew what we wanted and and we all kind of knew i think the the position we were in and the and the the position that we had been put in to succeed um and it was really up to us to to put the work in and, and play how our coaches wanted us to play. And, and it was just a confidence, kind of a swagger about that team that you, you said, it, you, I mean, going into games, it was, we knew we were going to win. There wasn't, even if we, we went down early or something, we knew the game was going to end four or five, one, you know, just because we had that type of confidence in ourselves and in our teammates. Yeah, I remember that. It wasn't, it wasn't, are we going to win? It was, are we going to win five zero? Are we going to win six one? It, it seemed like that was every game. And it, speaking of coaching staff, you now have Freddie, who was at the academy, now the assistant coach at RSL under Mike Pecky. I mean, even at RSL now, Justin, you guys have some fantastic coaches. How how have they kind of helped your development? Yeah, Freddie Freddie has been instrumental to my development. Um, I mean, that whole that whole coaching staff, and, and even Mike and 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 the coaching staff here. But starting from a younger age, back at the academy, 
um, Freddie was always he was always on me about not taking a play off and and expecting the best from myself. If I messed up a pass, he'd, be, he'd, he'd always be in my ear saying, come on, Jake, lad, you're better than that, yada, yada, yada. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's what I needed to hear and then what I needed to – it helped me focus and, and he kind of he, – he transformed my game really in terms of just being an average player to someone who can, who can go on and, and be a successful pro. Justin, I won't keep you that much longer because I know you're helping Aaron move real, move move a couch real quick. But but I got to ask you a question before you leave. <laughs> hey, I, I saw a video the other day. Are you trying to grow a beard or a mustache? What's what's going on? Uh that was just laziness. Uh, there, I shaved the other day. There's nothing going on. How, how many days this was that? Was that was that, about, was that was that was that about a week? Two weeks? Uh, it was about a week. <laughs> yeah, a week, week and a half, probably. It's not good though. The stubble is not great. I, you know what? I saw it on the video though. It's getting there. You're getting close. <laughs> you know, I appreciate that. I really do. Of course. <laughs> hey, as, as a fellow, you know, I'm not full ginger like you, but, you know, it's tough. You know, the face hair comes in light. It's not thick. You know, it's tough. You know? I gotta, yeah. I gotta, I gotta give you some love. <laughs> it's a grind out here. I, I'll take everything I can get. <laughs> well, yes. just Aaron. Aaron's in the car next to me asking if that's Garrett on the phone. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> well, he says hi. Oh, and tell Aaron I say hi, too. Well, I'm going to let you go, man. Thank you so much for jumping on the show today. We really appreciate it. Let's catch up down the road, all right? For sure. Thanks for having me. All right, cool. Thanks, Justin. So, everyone, stay here. We're going to take literally like a five-second break. Just five seconds. We'll come back. We'll bring our two in-studio guests onto the show. Five seconds starting right about now. Welcome back to the AZ Kicks It Show. As you can see, we now have our in-studio guests, Maggie Cagle and Kate Fossey. They are both with the U14 Girls National Team Camp in California. We've already spoken to Maggie about her first time experience. Back in September, you can watch that on the Facebook page. We'll start with Kate. What was the experience like getting called up to the national team? It was super fun playing with such great girls and at such a great intensity and meeting everybody, the coaches, the staff members, and like just the players did did anything kind of like stand out to you and you know for, okay let, let's bring it back how, how did you find out that you got that got named to the team well I came home from like being out with friends and my mom was like come sit down Kate and then my dad just had it printed out from an email and it was really exciting did you like believe it at first or did you have to like read it a couple times well like I believed it because like it had like it just was like so like real uh -huh. it was, like it was right there but I mean, yeah, I'm like... Very cool, very cool. So, Maggie, you, you've been called up before, too. The camp was in September. Mm -hmm. um, you've already been there, done that, right? You're like a veteran <laughs> at this point. Just, But still, nonetheless, it's always a cool experience to go to the National Team Camp. What, what was that experience like for you? Well, it was super cool um, receiving the letter and that it was printed out again for me, and that was super cool. Um, I was super excited to be called back in, and especially this time going in with Kate which is one of my teammates, so that's a really cool experience. Yeah, that, that had to have been a little bit different because the first time you went, you were just by yeah. yourself. You know, it's it, you know, it's like the first day at school, right? You, <laughs> like, you don't know anyone, you're not yeah. friends with anyone, but I mean, did you feel more comfortable like having like like a teammate there? For sure, yeah. It was a lot better having a teammate there, especially traveling and like going there and meeting new people with a person. That and I think have. like that, like if one of us were getting down, like we didn't do too well, like the other one was there to just like help us out and be like, you're good. Next, the next thing you'll get it right. You got this. Did, did anything like surprise you about it? Like what, you know, when you, when you look at the week that, that, that it was right, that you were there, like what, what kind of like stands out to you? That like going into it, I thought it was gonna be super scary and I was like super nervous, but like once you got to know everybody, it wasn't like that scary and it just was a blast. Yeah, and definitely the speed of play is incredible and so mm -hmm. high, and so you have to, like, adjust and be able to push yourself. Yeah, does, does that, you know, as a player, I mean, you, you girls are still young enough, right? So yeah. you're still in your development. But, but you know, when you when you go and experience, when you realize that now you're at the, the top, right? Now you're the, with the best U14 players in the nation. I mean, is it is it almost intimidating, but is it, like, you know, do you want to step up? I mean, kind of what goes in your mindset when you see someone do something that you normally don't see on the Saturday afternoon? Yeah. Well, I think it's just always about trying to push yourself and learn from mistakes or something good that happened and kind of for almost forget about it and then try and be even better the next play. Mm -hmm. I'd say the same thing. Well, Maggie, so your mom played professional soccer and she coached soccer too. I mean, is that why you're such a good player? Does that, does that help? It definitely helps having a parent who can help you and like 
uh, you can talk about the game all the time and watch the game and watch yourself too. Um, we're able to do that now with the videoing and everything. So it's nice to be able to have someone who's done or been there before and been able to help you. Well, so. that makes sense why you kind of got into soccer, right? Because your mom. Yeah. Yeah, your parents. How, how did you get into soccer? Well, I tried like all the other sports that like, girls play, like gymnastics and uh -huh. dance. And <laughs> I was just <laughs> not good. And then my parents decided to put me into like a more physical sport. And because like I always played with like the boys like at recess like football and stuff, uh -huh. so they put me into soccer, and I just kind of like just clicked and I just continued playing and I loved it. Wait, wait. So so if you're not good at dance, I have to assume that your goal celebrations can't be that good then. No, I kind of just have to. Walk. <laughs> what? I just have to walk. We're working on it. Are you? Come on. You don't have any like. I mean, nothing? I do. We got a handshake. <laughs> What's your handshake? Just, just like good. <laughs> Oh, right. come on. Okay. All right. I feel well, like you need to see. It can't be too long. Why? Says who? The referee. <laughs> but then can't we get, waste then time. Then we get a card? No, but like, you know, you, once you score, you get pumped up and you want to score again. So yeah. we, have, we can't waste yeah. time. Well, okay. So what's that like playing in the development academy? It's really cool because you play with the top people in Arizona and you get to meet like new people. Mm -hmm. And the staff members are awesome. They're super nice. And they're really good coaches. Yeah, and you get to compete against some of the better teams in the nation, like from California and your region. So, how, how yeah, how is that from just the talent competition, right? I mean, the DA it, it kind of funnels to the top where the best players play in there. Um, you know, how is it for you girls competing against? I mean, every single week you can't take a week off, right? Yeah. I mean, you have to be competing and, and trying every single week. Just how, how is that just for you, Maggie, as a player? It's definitely. You have to love it. Like, you're training four times a week, and if you don't have the passion to do that every night and travel on the weekends and sacrifice some other things, then it's not for you. But I think everyone who is doing it loves it and loves yeah. the sport and loves being a part of our team, and we it's just really fun to be around. Mm -hmm. is, it, is, it, is it, like, I don't want to say intimidating, but is it – you know, every single week you, you got to play. I mean, the mm -hmm. DA is serious, right? I mean, you want to yeah. make the playoffs, but you want to make the championship. There's fun in there. Yeah. Yeah. But like, it's what's still fun? Just like, I mean, we do scrimmages, and like our team's like super, like we like bond really good together, and we're like such a fun team. And nice to have off the field, like yeah, people to hang out with, and it's a break from school people, mm -hmm. and then being able to come if you had a bad day from school and come to soccer practice, and that's all. Everybody just over cheers you, and up. everyone's. Is supportive and mm -hmm. right that's even really cool. in da i mean it's such a competitive environment yeah. i mean that's that's good that you guys have that team camaraderie you know yeah and it's like we're competitive on the field but then once we step off we're like yeah. have, having fun yeah, yeah. Do, doing handshakes yeah <laughs> <laughs> well very cool very cool um you know for 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 younger players right because you guys are at that at that group right where, where mm -hmm. players are able to play da because you guys mm -hmm. play for the 04 se del sol team you know if there's any girls or even young boys out there who are watching i mean what, what I've already asked you for advice on, on the video of September, which you can check out on the Facebook page. Kate, what would you, uh, you know, if someone's asking you, hey, I want to play DA, what, what can they do to help them get just, to that level? Just in practice, when you're training, train your hardest, try out new things. And if you're not having fun with it, like Maggie said, it's like not for you. But if you're trying to get to the highest level, you got to train like you want to be there and show what you have in the games. What's yours, yeah. Maggie? What, what would you tell someone? A lot like Kate. Um, also, though, you have to work hard outside of practice, too, and put in the extra work if you really want to be at the top level. And just training hard in practices and in games and pushing yourself to your max. So, so okay, what is the goals for you guys? Is it is it to play college? Is it to play professional? Professional. Yeah. Professional, college. Both. I think they're all super cool, and a team sport is just awesome to have. Yeah. Just soccer in college, right? Yeah. 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 You <laughs> are you guys going to try to stay in state? Or, or, you know, I know you guys are still young, but oh, actually, well, the girls, uh, the process kind of yeah, begins now almost for you guys, yeah. right? Yeah. I think I'd want to go I to college. I want to go out of state. Yeah, yeah. California, maybe. California. California, what? Yeah, the beach yeah. and surfing. Yeah. Do you surf? I mean, I'm you not the learn. best. You can learn. I mean, I can. I'm not the best, though, because we used to go all the time. Uh. And soccer. <laughs> well, you said you can't go surfing when you're out in California for DA games, right? Yeah, I mean, you gotta no. be, you gotta be dialed to in for those yeah. games. Well, very cool, very so. cool. Well, girls, I want to thank you so much for coming into the AZ Kicks at Studio thank with me. I really us. appreciate yeah, it. Thank if, you. If, if anyone, if you guys want to check them out, you guys have a game, right, on Saturday? Saturday, 
Yeah. Yeah. I'll, let, I'll let you take it away. Go ahead. Tell people where they want to come watch <laughs> a, a Saturday, DA game. Saturday, 9 a.m. and Casa Gran. Or Casa yeah. Gran. Yeah. And you guys are the early game, right? And yeah. There's, and there's... So we're the first game. Cool, cool. And then there's another one right after at 11 for the... Uh, o- o- 03s. O-3s, yeah, thank you. O-1s and then... Oh, yeah. Oh, full, a full day of soccer at Casa yeah. Grande. So, well, girls, thank you so much. This ends the AZ Kicks It show. We hope you come and check us out next week. We'll get some more in guests. We'll get some more in studio guests. And, uh, and, and we'll wave. Th- thanks, everyone, thank for, for watching the show. We'll catch you later.